This is the USS Yorktown, CV-10, 38,000 tons and 837 feet long. The first Yorktown was sunk by the Japanese early during the hostilities in the Pacific in World War II. This Essex-class carrier is the second Yorktown. I served on another Essex-class carrier, the Intrepid. I feel pretty much at home aboard this ship. Here we are in the hangover. This is a B-25 Mitchell bomber. Sixteen of these were launched from a ship such as this in April 1942 to let the Japanese know we could attack their homeland. It was known as the Doolittle Raid. To me, this is a SPAD, an A-1 Sky Raid. I watched them daily, launch and recover during the Vietnam War. Of course, the ones I watched were painted gray. When it flew off this ship, it was designated an AD-4N. I love the sound of round motors. They would sputter and spit out flames and clouds of blue smoke. When starting, the F-6F Hellcat was one of the most popular Navy fighters in the Pacific Theater. It was designed to replace the F-4F Wildcat. The aircraft was responsible for destroying over 12,000 aircraft while in the service of the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marine Corps, and the Royal Navy. The FG-1D Corsair. I always thought of these planes as F-4Us, but the planes built by Goodyear were always designated as FG. The Corsair stayed in production longer than any other World War II fighter. The TBM Adventure Torpedo Bomber, or rather Torpedo Plane, first used in the Battle of Midway. Only six were used, and only one survived. But after this dismal performance, they improved dramatically and sunk the Japanese super battleship, Mamoto. This was the most common carrier-based fighter at the beginning of World War II, the F-4F Wildcat. They saw action in every major air battle in the Pacific. The SBD Douglas Dive Bomber. The SBD stands for Scout Bomber Douglas, or the more common term, slow but deadly. I will go topside to the flight deck now. This is CIC, or the Combat Information Center, commonly called Combat. This was my battle station on the Intrepid, which was also an essence class carrier. Here, all the air traffic is tracked. Sorties, combat missions, are plotted under the watchful eye of the commanders. I was an electronics technician and sometimes had to repair these radar repeaters. This space is on the O2 level. On a ship, the floors below the main floor, deck, are referred to as decks. Above the main deck, they are referred to as levels. This room is the last one the pilot see before going up and manning his plane. This is called the radio, and there's seven. This is where the pilots are briefed about their missions. Here they get all the details about their targets, where to rendezvous with tankers, and other details about their mission. After going up one more ladder, we're on the flight deck. I'm standing forward of the island structure, and you can see most of the expanse of the flight deck. Here's an F4G Phantom. Two, and an E-1B Tracer, also known as a Willy Fudd. In that dome atop the Willy Fudd is a rotating radar tank. Aft of the island structure, we have an F-18 Hornet, and across from it, an E-A-3 Skywarrior, also known as a Big Quaver, and an SH-3G Sea King Helicopter, also known as a Jolly Green. Another look at the Sky Warrior. With a 73-foot wingspan, it makes everything else look small. This is a better look at the Hornet. A version of this plane is flown by the Naval Acrobatic Team, the Blue Angels. The S-3B Viking is a twin-engine aircraft that will use primarily for anti-submarine warfare. This is an A-7E Corsair II. You may recall we saw the Corsair on the hangar deck below. I watched these planes fly almost every day. 
the F-8 K Crusader. One of our pilots shot down a North Vietnamese MiG flying one of these. This is the F-14A Tomcat, made famous in the movie Top Gun. It was the second swing wing fighter accepted by the U.S. military. On the fantail is the A4C Skyhawk, sometimes called Tinkerpoles. I would watch these fly from the ship with such a heavy load of bombs that they would go out of sight below the flight deck. About where this S2P tracker is, I would have swept underneath it, about four feet below the plane. This aircraft is used and in the submarine warfare. The A6C intruder is used for a number of purposes, such as bomber or electronic countermeasures aircraft. It has a curious seating arrangement, nearly side by side for the pilot and bombardier navigator. Now let's look below decks. During World War II, torpedoes would have been serviced and armed here. This is the machine shop. And see if it breaks, you can repair it or make the note. This is a typical burden space for this men. These racks would have had a six inch foam roll mattress. In the heat in this non air conditioned space, your mattress would absorb your sweat, and a shipmate could help you squeeze it dry. All your clothes were stored in this locker. Here are the lavatories. Over here, the restroom. Here are some medical and dental offices. This is the mess deck. Sometimes food would be very good and sometimes otherwise. I stood in line two hours for Thanksgiving Day meal once. Always you have to be aware of razor care. That usually meant that there were weevils in the flower. This is a story. There were church services every Sunday in the chapel, but unlike attendance was not compulsory. This is just a brief look at the aircraft carrier Yorktown. I hope you enjoy our visit.